So I demonstrate by using this example. So this is an example that we use in Z test. So to to so the question is still the same. We want to test whether the hypothesis of this ten student is from a student population where the population mean is one six zero point zero five. As you can see, we don't have the population parameter anymore. So we don't have the standard deviation for the population. So what we need to do, we need to perform a t-test. So first thing is to formulate the hypothesis. So we need to read the questions, whether it's from. So that means that whether it's equal or not equal to the mean. Okay, 160.05. So first is to formulate your null hypothesis, then alternative hypothesis. Then based on this, we need to set the criteria. So first is to determine the alpha, degree of freedom, and the tail or side, one tail or two tail. So just pause the video for a while and then try to try yourself to calculate. Okay, to determine what is the alpha level, so you can choose any value that you want. Okay, the commonly used one, as we discussed in the p value in the previous lecture, and then calculate the degree of freedom. And based on the hypothesis in the previous slide, what is the type of this test? Is it one tail or two tail? And then get the critical t value from the table. So you can try to use any value. Pause the video put in any value that you want and then get the critical value. Okay, after you have tried it, let's say this is an example. So in this case, the alpha is 0 0.05 and the degree of freedom is n minus one. So in the previous example is 10 students. So it's, it's equal to 10 minus one is equal to nine. And the hypothesis is to test whether there's a difference. So this test is a two tail test. Then we need to get the t value. So this is how we write the t value. So if you write in this way, we know this is a critical value that you set, the threshold that you set. So t, after that, write the significant level, 0 0.05, bracket, whether it's one tail or two tail test. If this is a one tail test, put one. If this is a two tail test, then put two. After that, comma, followed by the degree of freedom. So you can look for the answer. So the degree of freedom is nine, and this is a two-tail test, and the alpha is 0 0.05, so it's 95% of two sides all to together, so it's here. So you can go through it. So our critical T is 2.262. So remember, this is a two side, okay? And the critical T only give you the absolute value. So you can imagine if you have a curve, now you already set the threshold. So this is a criteria. It's two tail, and for the positive side is 2.262, negative side is negative 2.262. So the third step is to perform the statistical test. So now we have a hypothesis, we set the criteria, we need to calculate, okay? based on the sample that we obtain. So this is a formula. Okay. So you need to obtain the mean, so as you can see here. And you also need to obtain the standard error. Okay. So for the mean, I'm not going to explain anymore. So you can calculate the mean for so all this value. Okay, for this sample, you will calculate the mean and also the standard deviation. So the mean is 161.50. After you get the standard deviation, you need to put the standard error, okay, instead of the standard deviation, okay. So remember the way you calculate the standard deviation for the sample is different, okay. So if you forgot, then you have to go go back to the the first few lectures that explain the how to calculate the standard deviation for the sample. After you get the standard deviation for the sample, for the standard error, you can get it for by Divide the standard deviation of the sample with the square root of n. Then we will get this value. 
for the hypothesis that we want to test, the mean value, we just put here in the question, which is this one. After that, we can just solve the mathematic of this t test. Okay. Minus, then after that, divide. So this is show you how to calculate the standard error. So make sure you do it properly. After that, you will get your t distribution t value. After that, you will get your t score or calculated t value. So pause on this slide for a few seconds. Do you remember what is the critical t value that you get just now? So is this value, calculated t value or t score, is smaller or larger than the critical t? So this is what we're going to do next step to compare the calculated t with the critical t. So this is the t that we calculated just now. Okay. And this is the critical t that we obtained from the table. So we need to compare them. Of course, you can compare them directly, but I will suggest you to make a graph. Okay. I will suggest you to make a curve. So you can just draw a simple curve. Okay. After that, just mark where is your critical value. Okay. Just mark it. Then after that, just see where is your calculated t in this curve. As you can see, it's somewhere here. So 1.195. So it's somewhere here. Okay. Our critical t is much larger than the calculated t. Okay. And our calculated t is not fall into the rejection region. So after we have checked this, then we can make our conclusion. So the next step is to make a conclusion for the population, okay, which we took the sample. So in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis because the test score that we calculated is smaller than critical value. Then we can write the mean body height of the student in this course is 160.05 cm because we do not reject the null hypothesis.